use the distributive property to write an equivalent expression. Okay, in the last video we learned that the distributive property is when you have a set of parentheses and you distribute whatever is multiplying the set of parentheses into the parentheses. So for this first example, we're going to multiply the 2 by the x and then the 2 also by the 3. So whatever is on the outside of the parentheses needs to be multiplied into or distributed into every term that's inside the parentheses. In this case, there's only two terms. And in fact, all the examples here have two terms. But if you have more than two terms, you have to multiply whatever's outside the parentheses or distribute whatever's outside the parentheses into every term that's in the parentheses. Okay, so this one, 2 times x plus 3. So we distribute the 2 to the x. So you get 2x. And then you also distribute the 2 into the 3. So it'll be plus 2 times 3 or 2x plus 6. So 2x plus 6 is an equivalent to 2 times x plus 3. And that's using the distributive property. OK, this next one. Now, it's basically the same, except the number we have on the outside of the parentheses is actually behind the parentheses instead of in front. But you're going to do it the same way. You're going to distribute the 5 into each term that's inside the parentheses. So the a plus 3, which is in parentheses, times 5 is going to give you 5a plus 5 times 3, where you can rewrite it as 5a plus 15. OK, because 3 times 5, or 5 times 3 is 15. And that's going to be an equivalent expression to what we started out with. OK, this last one. Now you have, the only thing different here is you already have a number multiplied by a variable inside the parentheses, but you're going to still distribute. You're going to distribute the 6 into each of the two terms inside the parentheses. So 6 times 2a. We can write it as 6 times 2a plus 6 times 3. And now we can multiply everything out to simplify the expression. So 6 times 2a will give you 12a. And then 6 times 3 will give you 18. And you keep the plus sign, so you keep the addition part of it. And that's going to be your equivalent expression as 12a plus 18. OK, now let's, let's uh, skip down to factoring. And this is actually the opposite. It's going to be the opposite process um, of the distributive property. So we're going to do the opposite here. So instead of multiplying things out, we're actually going to be dividing. So you're going to look for something that's in common with each term to factor out. In this case, we have a 3x. And the factors of 3x are just 3 and x. And then the factors of 6 are 3 and 2. OK, so what they have in common is the 3. So at this point, we can factor a 3 out of each term. So we can put that out front, put the 3 out front. And then instead of multiplying each term by 3, we're now dividing each term by 3, because we're taking the 3 away and then multiplying the whole thing. So we can write a set of parentheses and put the plus sign in there, and then just divide each term by 3. So 3x divided by 3 will just give us an x. So that's what we write here. And then the 3 times 2 divided by 3, the 3's cancel out, and all you're left with is a 2. So the equivalent expression here is 3 
times x plus 2, where the x plus 2 is in parentheses. Okay, the next one, 2a plus 2. Well, the factors here are 2 times a, and then 2, and you can put a times 1 here. And eventually, you won't need to write this middle step. You'll be able to skip skip this step um, and just do that mentally. But for starters, um, it's a good habit to write this down so you can see what's going on. So the, the term they have in common is the 2. So we can divide each, each term by 2. And we'll pull that out. And we'll be left with... We're going to put the other two terms in parentheses, and then it's still addition, so we're going to leave the addition there. So 2a divided by 2, the 2's cancel out, and you're left with an a. And then the 2 times 1 divided by 2, the 2's cancel out, and you're left with a 1. So here's the equivalent expression will be 2 times a plus 1. Okay, this last one here, 6y plus 18. So let's factor that out. And, and you can factor the 6 into 2 times 3 and then add the y, so it would be 2 times 3 times y. But if you look, 6 is divisible by 6, and so is 18. 18 is divisible by 6. So we can just write the factors as 6 times y plus 6 times 3. We don't need to go all the way down to the prime factorization because what we're looking to do is, is pull out everything that they have in common. So we're looking for the, the greatest common divisor or the greatest common factor between the two terms. And in this case, it's going to be a 6 in each of them. The 6 is the greatest common factor. So when you divide the first term by 6 and the second term by 6, okay, so we're going to pull out a 6, and the first term becomes just a y, because you have 6y divided by 6, and the 6's cancel out, so you're left with a y. And then the second term, the 6's cancel out, and you're left with a 3. So there you go. You have a... you've successfully factored all three of those expressions and and you you end up with equivalent f expressions okay so that's the opposite factoring is the opposite of the distributive property okay you should have a good understanding of this and in the next video we'll we'll take it a step further and do some examples that are just a little bit uh, more complicated.